In this video, I've set up my camera to show the detail and uh, demonstrate the miniature steam engines that I've built. These steam engines are, uh, are the same ones that are used in my model miniature model steamboat book. And there are six of them. And I'll start out with the smallest. This is the engine that's in the, uh, the little two tugboat, which is it's only about 10 inches long. The engines all operate very nicely, just like the big engines. They have about a quarter inch bore, slightly larger than that, by a few thousandths, and a quarter inch stroke. They're very inexpensive and easy to make, partly because they're built from this hobby tubing. The cylinders are built from 9 inch hobby tubing and the valves are uh, 1 8 inch hobby tubing which have a very smooth interior and they're very precision material meaning that there's not out of roundness or crookedness in the, in the pieces. So that enables you to construct a very close fitting uh, piston and valve very simply you only have to uh, machine the piston to diameter you don't have to worry about the cylinder the cylinder and the valve with the cylinder head and the top part are soft soldered together a small piece of stainless steel wire is installed through the steam ports to uh, hold the the valve tube and the cylinder in alignment during the soldering and prevent plugging of the steam port. Soft solder will not stick to stainless steel so after you're through soldering remove the stainless steel wire and you have a nice little steam port between the, the valve tube and the cylinder. And then the, the steam line is soldered on the front of the valve and then the hole is drilled through afterwards that way you don't have to worry about leakage or aligning the, the steam inlet pipe correctly. The crankshaft is made from drill rod. The, the 3 8 is used for the crank discs. The discs are drilled and uh, pieces of uh, the smaller drill rod inserted and uh, it's soldered together and then the parts are trimmed off. Makes a very strong little crankshaft. Silver solder is used for this because you need the strength. I'll demonstrate the engine now with compressed air. The engine again runs uh, very nice on compressed air or steam. Unlike the big engines, which probably operate on 50 PSI of steam, these engines run on just a few pounds of pressure. Right now it's probably running on 3 pounds. That's probably going up to about 5 or 6 pounds. Now the next engine is like two of the first engines installed back to back with a bigger frame and a double crank crankshaft. So this is a two cylinder single acting engine. Okay. Little bit of little bit of power there. Okay, so the next engine is a three cylinder, and that has just a little bit more uh, complicated crank. It's got uh, it's got three cylinders, single acting. The crankshaft has the crank pins at 120 degrees apart. So this is a self-starting engine with the extra 
uh, piston there's no place for an eccentric so in this case I've designed a little gear driven valve shaft on the side that operates the valves. With a three-cylinder engine, you have the feature of self-starting, so this engine will, will self-start in any position where the, uh, where the other engines have dead spots. If they are stalled in the dead center position, they won't start. But a three-cylinder engine will. So this is a nicely balanced little engine. It's smooth running. It has quite a bit of power and again it runs on the low pressure of about 3 to 6 psi okay so the next engine in the family of engines is the four cylinder and the four cylinder is made much like the like the two single, the two cylinder single action acting engine with two blocks at uh, 90 degrees. And so this also is a self starting engine and it runs very nice. This one has been sitting around for many years and it's uh, kind of corroded. Can't keep the airline on there. The next engine is a single cylinder double acting engine. This one has a little bit different uh, of an engine frame. All the other ones uh, had the posts uh, built with the posts. Uh, this one has a quarter inch brass strap that's uh, bent into the legs of the uh, engine frame. This is not a self-starting engine. It will start if it's not in the dead center position. Try to slow it down here. And the last engine is a two cylinder double acting engine. This is also a self starting engine. Turn the air pressure on. So this engine has a power stroke every 90 degrees of rotation of the crankshaft, so it's got pretty good torque. It'll even start under a load, it's self-starting. Not nearly as balanced as the three-cylinder, so it does kind of hop around a little bit. If you But if you tighten it, fasten it down, that's not, not even noticeable.
all of these engines were sort of designed for uh, steamboats, little uh, miniature steamboats that I built and feature in my in my steamboat book. If you're interested in uh, building one of these little single cylinder, one cylinder single acting engines, you can email me and I will send you the plan in PDF form. It looks like this. So this is the PDF up on the upper right. You have the materials, the list of materials. I also have a page that I'll include with uh, some of the construction details, how the connecting rod uh, fastens to the crankshaft is kind of a, a, a unique idea, I think, and, and uh, one of the one of the features that make this engine work very well and, and very easy to uh, construct. So. Send me your email if you'd like a copy of this little engine, and I will send it to you, no charge. This is my book. This has uh, all six engines in it, along with six different boilers and six different steamboat hulls. And of course, you can mix them up and you know make make whatever you want. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, and again, if you're interested in uh, a copy of this plan sheet in PDF form, send me an email.